So these are some important vocabulary terms that I want to make sure you know, especially when you're taking your formative and whatnot. Uh, the positive x axis is known as the polar axis. The polar axis, right? Because we measure our angles starting from there. Like if you're looking at the unit circle, you start at zero and then go counterclockwise for positive angles. So positive x axis is also known as the polar axis. And we call the origin the pole. The pole is just the point zero, zero. Okay. And then this isn't on this, um, this is not on this diagram, but the y axis is the same as theta equals pi over two. All right. So let me leave that up for a bit. Tell me if you have any questions about it. You okay with that? All right. Now let's look at the kinds of graphs that we have studied. Let's look at the kinds of graphs we've studied. So on Monday, we created and wrote equations for a bunch of circles, right? And the form of a circle would be r equals a sine of theta or r equals a cosine of theta, right? And a just refers to the diameter of your circle, okay? For a cardioid, that um, was, you have r equals a plus or minus b cosine theta or r equals a plus or minus b sine theta. And a and b basically have to be, their absolute value has to be the same. This, this says a over b equals one, but that just means the same thing. Anything divided by itself is one. So a and b must match in order for your shape to be a cardioid. Okay. Let me ask you, so the cardioid pictured, right? If we look at the cardioid that's pictured here, do we think it's a cosine cardioid or a sine cardioid? Any ideas? Cos. Thank you, cos, very good. We've got it um, verbally and in the chat. Yep, cos, does anyone wanna defend themselves and why they said cos, justify their answer? It reflects over the x-axis. Good, um, thanks Chris. Yeah, it reflects over the x-axis, excellent. Right, um, so very good. Um, all right, we also studied on Thursday limassons, right? We had one loop limassons where you didn't have an, uh, you didn't have like a little a curly loop in, in there, right? Um, so that's again, just like a cardioid, the same format, A plus or minus B cos theta, A plus or minus B sine theta. Um, a is positive, B is positive, and the ratio of A and B is um, somewhere between one and two, okay? The ratio of A and B is somewhere between one and two. Okay. All right. And then the last one, we spent a lot of time on this, the inner loop limasson, right? So that was R is A plus or minus B cosine theta, R plus or minus B sine theta, just like the cardioid in the one loop. Um, but A had to be smaller than B. A had to be smaller than B in order for that loop to exist, right? And we noticed that A plus B was the diameter, right? And then B minus A was the length or the, if you want to call it the diameter of the inner loop. Any questions about these, these little friends? Yeah. Oh, right. So here, A, um, similar to with a circle with the cardioid, one loop limason and inner limason, A is sort of the same, right? It also kind of controls the size of the shape. And then B controls the direction of the shape. So, you know, as B gets more positive, um, the cardioid would flip over the x-axis and kind of move this way. And as B gets more negative, the cardioid would get more and more negative. Yeah, so someone asked in the chat, so I want to amplify it so you all can, can understand this, is um, to find the radius for the cardioid, or I would say the diameter for the cardioid, um, you would add A plus B. 
So if you had for a cardioid like three plus three cosine theta, your radius would be three plus three or six. Okay, good questions. Other questions that you all have at the moment? Okay, got two more graphs to look at. So this is on Zoom, but also in your Nearpod. And I put arrows next to the ones that we actually studied. Lemniscates, we didn't study this. Um, this is a form of a lemniscate. It's like a little figure eight kind of. Um, yeah, someone said in the chat, if it were three minus three cosine theta, it would still be six, right? Yes, it would. Basically add the absolute values. Yep. Mm -hmm. So don't worry too much about lemniscates for the purposes of um, this year, but just kind of know that it's out there. Um, R squared equals A squared cosine two theta. R squared equals A squared sine two theta. Um, a can't be zero, obviously, because then you wouldn't have a graph. But um, this is a, a, a special graph that is relevant for some other reasons, but don't worry about it for this year. And then we did spend a lot of time on rows graphs, right? We had rows graphs with an even N and rows graphs with an odd N. They can be sine or cosine. Um, if n is even, you have two n petals. If you have n is odd, you have n petals. And then we also looked at, um, only because a couple of people played with it in the Desmos and discovered it, we also looked a little bit at Archimedes spiral. I don't have an arrow because you don't really have to know it for the test, but um, it's r equals theta, and it's just kind of a, a spiral out. And we might look at it later if we have time. I might teach you um, some other cool stuff that again, you won't be held accountable for, but I think it's cool. Um, we'll see if we, get, if we get to it though. Okay. All right, so remember that for a rose, A still controls the diameter, right? Um, and then N controls how many petals the rose has. Um, for this pictured one, for graph B for the rose, this is kind of like a trick question. Do you all think it's um, a cosine or a sine? This is kind of tricky because it, it, it does, it looks like kind of like both, right? Any guesses? It's okay to be wrong. We've got sine. We've got cosine, we've got a couple of different guesses. So here's my um, thing that I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna try and share, actually. Um, I'm gonna move it over. So new share. Oh, you guys can see it. Okay, great. So uh, just take a look at this. So this is R equals three cosine four theta. See how it has a petal lined up on the x-axis like that? right? It's like lined up on the x-axis. So um, that's going to be a cosine graph. Sine graphs are just rotated counterclockwise from cosine graphs when it comes to roses, okay? So just so you know, like if I uncheck the cosine graph, see how the sine graph isn't lined up on the x-axis? It's kind of like the same graph, but shifted counterclockwise. So that's how you can tell with the rose. If it's oriented with cosine, it'll be oriented on the polar axis. And it's easy to remember in a way because cosine kind of goes with X. Okay, so sine and cosine. All right, um, let's see. How about C? Do you think C is a cosine rose curve or a sine rose curve? Do we think C is cosine or sine? I got a couple of people in the chat. Yeah, it is sine, right? Because it does not have a petal lined up on the polar axis, right? It's shifted, right? The first petal is shifted up the up from the polar axis counterclockwise, so no. All right. Okay, um, what questions or issues do we have at the moment? Anything?
Okay, and these slides are, they should be in the modules, the week five modules resources page. So you can always look there um, later if you want. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this. This is a, I guess I could stop the recording for this because uh, people are just gonna miss out if they're not here. So let me pause the recording. And then we will be done. All right. So if you would please turn your attention to the Zoom screen if you are at home or the Promethean board if you're in person. I just want to show you one quick, cute little thing um, that if you go on to higher levels of math, like past AP Calc AB, um, it will be kind of useful for you to have this in the back of your mind. Okay, so we talked about that Archimedes spiral, right? We had R equals theta, um, theta is greater than or equal to zero. And this is what that graph looked like. Your radius is the same as your angle, okay? And what we're gonna do is kind of combine that idea of parametric equations and polar equations. So we'll say that for X, we have X equals R cosine theta and Y equals R sine theta, just like we did in all of our other units. R cosine theta, R sine theta, okay? Okay, but with this Archimedes spiral, the equation is that R equals theta, right? So we can also just make these equations R cosine R and R sine R because R and theta are the same or theta cosine theta, theta sine theta, okay? So let's say that R is gonna be our parameter of time. Let's say that R is equal to say T. All right, so let R equals T. So we'll have a parametric equation with respect to time, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is just kind of show you, um, let me move my face because we say in person people can't see. So a table with T, X, and Y, just like you did in the parametric, uh, the parametric unit. All right, so let's say we've got all these T values. We have T is zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi, right? Just pretty simple. Um, you know, around the unit circle, right? Um, so when T is zero, right, if we plug uh, zero into R for R, right, then X is zero and Y is zero, right? Because uh, zero multiplied by anything is just gonna be zero. If we have T is pi over two and we plug pi over two into the equation, we also get zero because cos pi over two is zero and then pi over two times zero would be zero. And then for y, it'd be pi over two times sine of pi over two, pi over two times one is one. Um, for pi, when we drop pi into the equation for t, we get negative pi. When we drop pi in for that sine parametric equation, we get zero. And then I wanna just pause to take a minute and see how it looks on the graph. So that time zero is right here at zero, zero, the origin of the pole pi over two is up here at zero pi over two on the y-axis or what we call theta equals pi over two, right? So we can kind of see how the parametric equation is starting to move, right? For pi, that's down here, right? Over here, so negative pi is zero is this point. And then we'll keep going for the last two. So three over two, we have an x of zero. And then we have a sine of negative three, uh, pi over two, and then that's gonna be down here, okay? And then for two pi, we get that x should be two pi and uh, y should be zero. So two pi zero lives right here, right? So I just wanna expose you really quickly to the idea that parametric equations can also connect to polars. Cause I know some of you are gonna go on to be engineers and do, do higher level math and doctors and all that stuff. So I just wanted to kind of have that in the back of your mind a little bit so that you can kind of um, remember that, okay? All right, so we are polar experts at this point, right? We know how to write curves. We know how to write equations. We know what's going on with it. Um, so uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Um, way to work hard. Good luck on all your AP exams and I will see you on Monday, hopefully, at the latest. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Get that work done. Bye, Ms. Bader. Bye, Nikias. Thank you.